All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Small Data SF, uh, and I'm super excited to have uh, Ryan Boyd with me, who's organized this amazing conference. Uh, it's I'm, great to be back. Like uh, we've talked, we've talked before. So yes, it's great to be back. That's here. right. I think earlier this year we had a chat about you know Mother Duck and what you guys are building. But then today I see there's a new entity out here that small data <laughs> SF and I see the crowd here I'm early to the conference just to check out the vibe and uh, I'm loving it already I was here for the workshops as well I saw some very interesting conversations happening some great networking but my question you know uh, Ryan in the world of big data why are you talking about <laughs> small data why like what's the reason people are kind of curious about it well, I, there's two areas here. Is, is one, I would say, call it useful data or pragmatic data. Um, and then the second area is, what is the difference between small and big? Who defines what's small and big? But I'll talk about the, the pragmatic side here yeah. first. You know, we live in a world where uh, we've had software built for many years in this highly distributed architecture. And it really started around the early 2000s uh, with software with this distributed architecture. And then, you know what? Hardware has advanced a lot. Uh, we went from the largest EC2 machine being, I think, 40 gigabytes of RAM um, in the mid, like, you know, 2010s to being now 400, or sorry, not 400, but four terabytes of RAM, like that's a massive, massive. increase uh, in the amount of RAM. And we've also seen a massive increase in the amount of processing power. And so, you know, simultaneously, while we said back when I was at Google BigQuery and all, that mm -hmm. data was going to grow to this infinite scale, it really hasn't. So, um, you know, we're just arguing that, hey, you should be pragmatic about the data that you uh, use and the technologies that you use along with it. And the vast majority of companies, the 99%, uh, at least 99% of the use cases, don't really need this highly distributed technology. Uh, they can work with things like SQLite, who's one of the co-organizers mm. at Terso, uh, or DuckDB and MotherDuck. They can work with these technologies that are designed to, and optimized for single machines. And it's more efficient, it's, more, it's easier to debug, it's easier to uh, implement, and uh, so that's kind of you know, that's kind of the big philosophy around this. Yeah, uh, we wrote this small data manifesto where we talked about this that you know small machines are efficient and powerful. Um, you should take a you should take a shot of our, our espresso machine over there. Small machines <laughs> are efficient and powerful. Yes. Um, but you know also the the idea of local first development. Mm. Uh, people nowadays have super powerful laptops. Take advantage of them as you're building your applications. Right. Don't just have them be dumb terminals to the internet, right, or mm. to the cloud. Um, you know, and a variety of other things. I'd encourage everyone to to read the the small data manifesto. It's uh, you know why we are all gathered here today. Yeah, that's uh, awesome, and thanks for sharing that. I'm kind of also curious to learn a little about you know the use cases that kind of come out of it because I know you work with a lot of enterprises out there. Mother Duck has been doing a lot of you know obviously I've seen you all doing so much in this space. So kind of curious to know a little bit about how you kind of looking at enterprises and what are the leaders talking about it? Are they kind of excited about it? Are they you know curious to learn more that or oh, is it the bet we want to take? What's your thought there? I think, you know, everyone looks for simplicity. Yes. Um, and that includes the people on the teams mm -hmm. uh, who are looking for simplicity just to make their lives easier, to be able to go home earlier in the evening, right? <laughs> so if you can get, accomplish the same thing with a simpler tool stack, people are all excited about that. Now, as you work your way up the chain in the enterprises, they're also really concerned about cost. Um, and a lot of the you know big data distributed technologies, you're paying per machine you're, you have running. Right. Many of them you have to, to uh, you know, make so that you have peak load covered. Mm. Um, and you don't always have peak load, but you have this cluster running all the time really just doesn't make sense from a cost standpoint. So as companies are being, you know, becoming more conservative about their spending, they are looking at a lot of these technologies and saying, hey, could I cut my bill with my cloud data warehouse? Or could I cut my bill, um, you know, with my AI models? We have some speakers here today, you know, who started off by using some of the, you know, major 
uh, you know, LLMs out there and using them as web services, but then said, hey, wait, maybe I can do this on my own machines. Wow. And so then they moved it to you know, building on their own machines, and then they realized that they could have a model that is you know, a hundredth of the size of the model in the cloud and you know, a tenth of the cost or something like that. And it would be 90% as accurate. And it's like, okay, like, do I need that last 10% of accuracy given to me mm. by this huge model that costs a lot for every single you know, query that's happening? Um, and so you know, these are the types of things that we see every day that you know, people are focused on cost and focused on simplicity. Right, I think 100%. Simplicity is something, I talk to a lot of enterprise leaders and that's what sometimes they feel is like, why do we have to over complicate things when we can do it simply? And sometimes the, you know, the longer the project, the bigger the data, the longer the project. But if you can, you know, obviously departmental wise, if you can cut it down to small data and, you know, work on it, it yeah. could be much faster. They can achieve goals and I think the turnaround is faster as well. Have you heard that sort of thing from enterprises as well where, Cost also kind of plays a very important role. So why are we getting into, you know, the complexity of big data? Yeah, no, we hear cost, and it's really where the enterprise folks interplay with the actual teams working on it that right. it becomes interesting. Because if you have the teams as your advocate on the bottom, and then you have the you know the enterprise advocating for you on the top because of cost, you know that's really where where your sweet spot is. Mm. And I think the you know, we've heard, for instance, uh, enterprises say, you know what, you have uh, three Snowflake instances. You have a dev, you have a test, and you have a prod. We just need the prod. Cut yeah. out the dev and cool. test. Yeah. And it's like, you know, there's there are some, uh, you know, petty smart, pound foolish uh, ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't advocate that you cut off your test and, and your <laughs> dev, even if you are on Snowflake. Um, but in cases where they're told to do that, it's like, okay, what do I do? And and so that's where a lot of the local first development comes into play and is great around things like DuckDB, where uh, you can run DuckDB in your local environment and deploy the exact same thing to the cloud with Mother Duck, um, and you can basically have identical environments locally and in, and, and in cloud, so you get to do a lot of your local development. We, for instance, use the, the uh, sampling functionality that exists in right. uh, DuckDB to just sample our data warehouse on our local machine, run all of our tests, uh, and if that's good, then we push to, to prod. So, you know, these are the types of things that people can do. Um, and so, you know, but this, you know, this conference isn't really all about Mother Duck. I'm good at talking about Mother <laughs> Duck, uh, but uh, you know, this conference is really about many other uh, other folks. So, you know, we have our partners in Terso and Alama as co-organizers of this event. Nice. Uh, many of the the sponsors here, uh, you know, including larger folks like Cloudflare, you know, are here because they believe in this simple approach, pragmatic approach. You know, you mentioned, um, you know, people that have big data use cases. Yeah, it exists for sure. Uh, but I would say most of the big data use cases exist here in the Silicon Valley, mm, in true. San Francisco, true. the large tech companies. Yeah. Uh, but even we have some of the, like one of the speakers today, Jake, uh, Jake is from Okta. And right. Okta has actually taken their big data use case of a lot of transformation of their, of their log data and said, hey, how can we break that down so that we can simplify it? And they actually just run hundreds of DuckDB instances uh, that are essentially kind of throwaway, like Docker containers that just do the work and then you know go away. Um, and, you know, and they've done that to dramatically reduce their, their data warehouse costs. Mm. So uh, he'll be on the panel with you today yes, exactly. and, and talking with you. Um, but you know, there's so you know, even in Silicon Valley with tons and tons of data. You can find great use out of these small data, you know, technologies, uh, as we call them. So. That's awesome. Uh, also, uh, kind of interested to know a little about. Do you think small data is the new, uh, you know, the new big thing that's coming? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice language there. Well, we had, you know, big data London. You were at last week. Um, 
and we have Small Data SF uh, <laughs> a week a week apart. Exactly. That was a little intentional. Um, and, you know, I really do. I really do. And that, that's the idea here is the movement uh, is just starting, but we're encouraging everyone to join the movement, read mm. the manifesto, uh, understand why, why we're so excited about small data. And I think it could be the next big data movement, right? Big yeah. data has lasted, you know, 20 years. Strata is no longer around for us, uh, but, you know, Big Data London continues. I think, you know, small data has a, has a really good chance, like taking this pragmatic view, simple, lower the cost, um, and, you know, focus on your actual business problems. And yep. I think that, that will be the next wave. I'm excited. And uh, is this something that you're planning to do it every year as well? And also, for those who couldn't attend today, I know yeah, obviously yeah. you all have... Uh, this is the first year you wanted to keep it limited in terms of the capacity as well. So for those who couldn't attend, uh, what's the best way for them to look into the sessions? Is it going to be available on demand for them to have a look at it? How does it work? Yeah, so let me answer these questions. Uh, first, starting with the, uh, the sessions today, we will make those available online nice. uh, after we're, we're done uh, editing them and such. But... Uh, we will make those sessions available online. We'd encourage everyone in the meantime to check out the, the Small Data Manifesto. Yep. Uh, just search that on Google and you'll find it. Um, and uh, so, you know, just start in the conversation, right? Like get on your Twitter and LinkedIn and talk about why you are interested in small data, why, uh, you know, your company is interested in small data. And we'd love to hear and participate in that conversation. Um, you know, and, and we will host more of these events. Nice. Uh, I have everyone asking. We already have a bunch of speakers uh, who are, have expressed interest for next nice. year. Uh, and we've, you know, started meeting with them for next year. Um, and, uh, you know, we had a sold out event this year. Um, and, you know, well, actually more than a sold out event. Exactly. We added, <laughs> we added a few extra tickets. Hopefully there's enough food for everyone. But, um, yeah, you know, I think, I think this will continue and we'll get bigger and bigger over time. And we're really excited for everyone to be part of that journey. It's about the community. It's yeah. not just about us. So. Ryan, I love it. And I love how you've kind of started this moment. And I'm pretty sure it's going to go long way. So thanks for sharing the, all the details. I'm going to stay tuned. I'm going to go out and interview all the amazing speakers that you've got on board. You have some interesting partners participating who have exhibits, who have exhibiting yours. So I'll be sharing with them and uh, looking forward to the panel discussion as well. Thanks so much, Rivet, and uh, you know, definitely enjoy the day here. Thank you very much. Such a pleasure chatting with you today. Thank you. Thank Likewise. you.